النعيم الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشكره ونصلي ونسلم على حبيب إله العالمين حافظ سره ومبلغ رسالته الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم محمد وبآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاسب حقوقهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى كيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وكلامه الكريم وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون آمنا بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وآل محمد In Surah Anbiya, which is the 21st chapter of Quran Majid, the very first verse of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the time of reckoning is very near, yet man is turning his head out of heedlessness, out of ghaflat. He is in deep slumber. He's sleeping. See, ghaflat in Arabic, it means La parwai or beta wajuhi in Urdu or in Farsi. Yani a person is asleep. A person doesn't want to wake up. He doesn't want to get up and think. He's in deep slumber. This is called beta wajuhi or la parwahi. Yani he has forgotten Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has forgotten the purpose of his creation. He has forgotten death that he has, he has to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Mu'minun, that أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ What did you think then? That are you created in vain? There's no purpose for creation? No, you are going to send back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your return is towards us. And when we hear people pass away, we go on reciting إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِيُونَ Today this person passed away, tomorrow that person has passed away. We have been hearing this on and on, and we do recite, we do tilawat of this verse, but we do not keep ourselves uh, thinking that we also will go someday. That is why a masoom imam says, when a coffin was passing in a funeral, in a particular, particular funeral, a masoom imam says that put yourself inside the coffin and think that you are carried and you are, then the mu'minin are heading towards Qabristan. They are heading towards the cemetery. Now, ghafla is taking us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happens? وَلَا تَكُونُ كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hashr, and do, do not become like those who have forsaken Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَكُونُ كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ What will happen if you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your creator? Allah says in Quran, then we made them forget themselves. Ulaika humul fasikun. And these are the transgressors. That we made them forget themselves. Because they forgot me, Allah says. I made them forget themselves. Please recite a salawat. <laughs> People are carried away. With the adornment and the decoration of this world, al malu wal banun, zinatul hayatul dunya wal baqiyatul salihat. Quran says that mal, wealth, and children are the adornment of this world. Mostly, people are carried away with this world, yeah, with the love of this world, with hubb dunya, with the adornment of this world, forgetting death, 
forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forsaking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ali al-Islam says an interesting thing in Ajub al -Arab. He says that if death would have not come to you, or if death was supposed to be forgotten, or it would have not come to you, then if, it, if you were supposed to forget death, then Suleiman was supposed to forget death. But Suleiman did not forget death because a person who was bestowed favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, numerous favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Suleiman ibn Dawood. Then he would have forgotten death, but he did not forget death. He was so grateful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was Na'mal Abd, one of the best servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Nabi Suleiman. It is, history tells us that Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam's father, Nabi Dawood, was blessed with 19 sons. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Suleiman as a prophet. And there's a specific reason that why Suleiman was chosen a prophet. So there are reasons like knowledge, wisdom of Suleiman alayhi salam. Suleiman was chosen as a prophet. Now at that time, there was people of Bani Israel, the elders of Bani Israel, and the pioneers of Bani Israel, they were, they, you know, when a person is chosen, when he's given a position or a post, you'll get people speaking something. So they started saying that Suleiman has got other brothers, total there are 19 brothers. Others, they, they are more deserving to have this position than Suleiman alayhi salam. And when the news reached to Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam, it, he was disappointed. Suleiman sat and thought that let me pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a miracle so that I should have a hujja and I should have a proof. I should prove to them that I'm the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this post and position is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah has appointed me as his prophet. So Suleiman prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but history tells us that when Suleiman prayed to Allah, when did he pray? In the middle of the night. So this is the best time to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even Imam Hussein alayhi salam wanted that he should be blessed and bestowed with a rahma, with a daughter. Bibi Sakina alayhi salam, he prayed in the middle of the night in, in Salat al-Layl. Thus, Suleiman prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, O oh Lord, give me a kingdom. Because he sat and thought, what shall I ask to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So that it should be a proof and a hujja to the people of my people of Bani Israel. He prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, O oh Lord, give me a kingdom, such a unique kingdom that you will have never given anybody else after me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua. The kingdom which Allah bestowed on Sulaiman was a unique kingdom, and you all know about it. I won't go in depth, but I'll just mention a few points about the kingdom of Sulaiman alayhi salam. It is said that that kingdom, that's, that the jinns, the powerful jinn, were at the service of Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam. And God forbid, if they would disobey Sulaiman alayhi salam, then they would be chained and shackled automatically. Suleiman had power of the, o, over the winds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him an instrument which is called Bisate Suleimani, which would cover a distance of two months in a day. It would, it rapidly, it would go so fast, the, that Bisat, that instrument of Suleimani. In short, Mufassirin tell us that he had a key of the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was Suleiman. Now, it is said that because if Allah goes on giving you the na'mah, his favors, when he goes on bestowing the favors on a human being, and when a human being goes on thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he shows his gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Quran says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٍ If you are thankful to Allah, then Allah says in Quran that I will, I will bless you more favors mine, I'll increase my favors on you. But if you are ungrateful, then I'll snatch away my blessings from you. So he went on praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he went on saying to people, Hadha min fadl rabbi. Whatever you see, this is fadl from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes you are praised. People will tell you, oh, you've got such a nice voice. People will tell you many things. Whenever people, a person praises you, just remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the sunnah of Sulaiman. Sulaiman would say, whatever I have, this is the fadl and the favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not mine. So Sulaiman went on praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah went on giving him fadl, favors, and bounties and blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once, when Sulaiman was in his bisat, in his instrument, flying high with many, with the whole army was flying with Suleiman. 
Suleiman was with his army, an angel revealed, an angel was revealed, an angel comes with a revelation to Suleiman and says to Suleiman that, O oh, Suleiman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to bless you and bestow on you a new favor, a new, a new blessing. He says, what's that? The angel says that Allah wants to give you a kind of wind which is going to inform you any creature at any spot, at any place, any creature, if it speaks anything, you will be informed that a particular creature spoke something about whatever. You will be aware. This is a new kind of blessing which Allah wants to bestow on you. He says, Alhamdulillah. He, here also Suleiman thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he showed his gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at that time, while Suleiman was going on with his army in that instrument, he reached to a valley of ants. And you all know the story, which is there in Surah Naml. So when he reaches at the valley of ants, he's flying high. Yeah, he's high in the air with that instrument. But the leader of the ants, she stands, the queen, she stands and she announces, she declares that, oh, oh ants, hide into your dwellings, go into your dwellings before Suleiman crushes you. Lest Suleiman crushes you. Now when Suleiman heard this, Suleiman commanded that this bisat, this instrument, this aircraft should, be, should land at this valley. And the aircraft landed there. Where the aircraft landed there, Suleiman came down. And Suleiman, according to Quran, also in Surah Naml, Suleiman smiled. And then Suleiman summoned this leader of the ants, this queen of the ants. And he said that, I want, I want to talk to you. So when, when Suleiman talks to her, Suleiman poses two questions to her. Suleiman says that, do you think that I'm an oppressor? That I will oppress? I will crush without any reason? So she says, no, Ya Nabi Allah. I know that you are not an oppressor, yeah? But I was fulfilling my responsibility and my duty because I'm the leader. So I went and I just announced and declared that it was my responsibility, my duty. I declared that they should go in the dwellings. The second question Suleiman poses is, he says that you knew that I'm high in the sky, flying in the air, and you guys are down here in the, on the land. How will I crush you? So she comes up with this answer. She responds to Suleiman. She says that, Ya Nabi Allah, this also I knew, that you are high in the air, and we are down in the land. I knew this. We are in our valley. But there's a special reason to tell them to hide and not to see your magnificence, not to see your Jaho Jalal, your army, the way you came. What is the reason? She says that these people, I didn't want them to be tempted and attracted with hubbe dunya. If they would see... Uh, they will be tempted, they will be attracted, and they've got that love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will come out, and hubbe dunya will enter in. Love of this world will penetrate in their hearts. That is the reason that I didn't want them, I didn't want them to see your magnificence, I didn't want them to see your jaho jalal. On hearing this, Suleiman says to this ant, she say, he says that it seems to be that you are very intelligent. Can you advise me? A Nabi says to an ant, can you advise me? The ant says, yes, surely I can advise you. But you also mention one blessing which Allah has bestowed on you. Suleiman says that I'm blessed with an instrument which covers a distance of two months in a day. And I've got power over the winds. And do you see this, this instrument of ours, this aircraft? It's blessed on the air. This itself is a great blessing. So she comes up with one reason, with one answer. She responds to Suleiman that, oh Suleiman, do you see this aircraft, the way it is placed on the air? Do know, anything which stays on the air, it is not firm. The foundation is not very strong. Don't we say that making sand castles in the air, it is like making sand castles in the air. It's not firm, isn't it? So if it's, it's, it's placed in the air, then it's not firm. Do know that it won't be firm. Male dunya and the Adornment of this world is not, whatever it is, whatever you are bestowed, one day it is going to be snatched away. The foundation is not very strong. Do you know this? This is also a lesson for you. Do you know that why Allah has given you this instrument and why it's, it is placed on the air and why it goes very rapidly in the air to show you that all this male dunya, it is going to, it is going to, it is, it is going to come to an end. It is going to finish. 
It will, if the foundation is not very strong, do not rely on this world and don't, do not rely on your possessions. Do not rely on this nirma also. It is going to come to an end one day. On hearing this, Nabi Suleiman smiled and he recited this verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, O oh Lord, grant me that I should be grateful oh, oh, for, to you for all these bounties and all these blessings which you have bestowed on me and on my parents. And give me tawfiq so that I can perform amal saleh Suleiman prays to Allah in Surah Naml, verse number 19 and 20 onwards. He says that so that I can perform amal saleh and make me enter with the righteous servants. Of your right, make me enter in the paradise with your righteous servants. Please recite a salawat. This was Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam. His gratefulness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person, according to Imam Ali alayhi salam, the more you remember the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ghaflat will come away, will come out. If you remember the bounties, and if you remember that it has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way Amirul Mu'minin says that ghafla is very dangerous. Da'imul ghafla yu'mal basira. Which means that the continuity of heedlessness it, it makes the, the, heart, the hearts blind. Da'imul ghafla yu'mal basira. Imagine Quran says that ulaika kal an'am. Bal hum azal, ulaika humul ghafilun. These are like animals. Then he says they are worse than animals. Who? Who are ghafilun? Who are in heedlessness? Who are in deep slumber? They are like animals. It is so dangerous to be ghafil. To, yeah, a person does not think of the bounties of Allah. He does not think of death. That is why it is said that in the time of Rasulullah, Rasulullah is quoted to have said that remember the demolisher of desires. Somebody asked Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, what is the demolisher of desires? Rasulullah replies, the demolisher of desires is death. Then Rasulullah says, the most sagacious and the most pious amongst you is that person who remembers death and pre prepares himself for death. In the time of Imam Hassan al-Mustaba, salawatullahi wa alayhi. Oh, it is said that when a person comes to visit Imam Hassan alayhi salam, while Imam was on his deathbed, and the person sees Junaid bin Abi Umayyah, sees Imam Hassan alayhi salam vomiting, and he saw the pieces of the liver of Imam Hassan coming in the dish, in that utensil. He sees, and then at that time, he says to Imam Hassan alayhi salam, that why are you, aren't you going, why aren't you be treated? So Imam Hassan replies, that there is no escape from death. Then Imam Hassan says, that O Junaid bin Abi Umayyah, the successors of the Prophet are 12, and 11 are from the sons of Ali and Fatima. Most of them, all of them, the 11 sons, will be killed either by sword or they'll be poisoned. Then Imam Hassan salam says, then he says to Imam Hassan, that, oh my master, give me a piece of advice. Imam Hassan replies, that, oh Junaid bin Abi Umayyah, prepare yourself for the final journey. Imam says, prepare yourself for the final journey and gather the, gather the provision, Imam says. Gather the provision before death attacks you. Imam Hassan was also asked that who is, a, who is a ghafil person? We are discussing about deep slumber, isn't it? About heedlessness, about ghaflat, about that sleep. That man is asleep and he does not think of death. He does not think of the bounties of Allah. This life itself is a bounty of Allah. See, our immas at that time, when they were on the deathbed, at that time also they would advise about death. And they would make people wake up from that deep slumber, from that sleep. And even Imam Ali salam, was asked, Imam Ali was asked, Sasa bin Sohan asked Imam Ali salam, that Ya Ali, give me a piece of advice. Imam Ali salam, takes his palm and he puts his two fingers on his palm and he says, Ana wa Ali abawa hadhihul ummah. Me and Ali are the fathers of this ummah. Then he says, Oh Sasa, today you see me sleeping on this deathbed. This itself is a lesson. Today you can see me, tomorrow you won't see me. This itself is a lesson, that today I'm present, tomorrow I won't be there. Take lesson from this world, take lesson from this life. And Imam Hassan was asked that what, 
Uh, who is a ghafil person? This is very interesting. And this is the message of my majlis today. Who is a ghafil person? Who is a person who is in deep slumber? How will we know that this person is a ghafil person? He is in heedlessness. Imam Hassan al mustaba replies that ghafil person is that person who is tariq al masjid, who abandons a mosque, who is tariq al masjid and ta'at al fasid, and a person who obeys a transgressor, who does taqlid kurkurane. Taqlid is following a person blindly. Whatever he says, ha. Yeah, others are doing taqlid at home. <laughs> Their kibla is at home. Please recite us a lot. <laughs> so Imam Hassan replies that these two signs are of a ghafil person. Tariq al masjid, the one who abandons a mosque completely. Completely, he forgets a mosque. And since we are remembering Marhuma today, I must mention one characteristic of this Marhuma, Marhuma Nargis by Allah Rakhia. Because I remember often, regularly I would meet her on Wednesdays when I would come for senior citizen sessions. After the program, I would meet her here. And there's one thing I must say about her, and that is that she was very regular coming to the masajid. And I've heard this even from Khawateen, that, uh, that she, wherever she would hear there's majlis, she would present herself at the presence of Ahlul Bayt. Because what is our belief? We believe that in our majalises, Zahra is also present. So she presents herself at the presence of Ahlul Bayt. She presents herself. She was the slave of Ahlul Bayt, the kanis of Zahra. She was presenting herself at her mistress. She would be present in majalises. She never abandoned the mosque. This is a lesson for us. Imam Hassan says that a ghafil person is that person who abandons a mosque. Balki Imam Ayatollah Sistani says in his Tawzihul Masail, he doesn't say that do not keep relation with Tariq Salah. Tariq Salah is something else. The one who abandons Salah. No, Ayatollah Sistani says in his Tawzih that do not keep relation with a person who abandons a mosque, who does not come to the mosque. He does not say, do, do not keep relation to a person who does not pray. Do not eat with him. Do not keep matrimonial relations. Do not give your daughter. Do not take, do not take a daughter from him. A person who does not keep relation with a mosque. A mosque itself needs to have a relation with it. Yeah? Be at the end of the day, a person comes to the mosque. Whether you like it or not, you will be brought to the mosque. You will be brought to the mosque. Motram Sameen, Ghaflat ek bimari hai. Ghaflat ek bohat buri cheez hai. Or Imam Hassan ne hume yehi samjaya hai. Ke insan jab masjid ko tark karta hai. Or fasik ki peravi karta hai. Dar hakikat wo insan ghafil hai. Kehte hai. Ke Iran me Allah mein majlisi ke zamane me. Fakat ek waak hai or aap ye zahmat ko tamam karo. Allah mein majlisi ke zamane me. Allah mein majlisi ye awwal. Unke zamane me. Ek baatakwa insan tha. Or Iran me Isfahan me Allah mein majlisi Isfahan me rehte the. Isfahan me kuch hooligans hua karte the. Farsi me usko lutiha kehte hai. Hooligans lafange. To wo lafange aage us baatakwa insan ke paas. Or kehne lage ke aaj hum aapke mehman banenge. Hum aapke paas aayenge. So he was a little scared that if he comes to our house and if he does not do it, then what will happen? We have a wife, a family, so he thought that we are better to go to the church. He went to the church. He went to the church. So he went to the church. And he said that it is better to go to the church. The church also went to the church. He 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 went to the church. And the church came there. Hooligans came there. جب وہاں پہ بیٹھ گئے تو اب گفتگو ہونے لگی انہوں نے ایکسپیکٹ نہیں کیا کہ علامہ مجلسی بھی آئیں گے لیکن علامہ مجلسی آ گئے جب علامہ مجلسی آ گئے تو انہوں نے ایکسچینج آف وڈز ہو گئی گفتگو شروع ہوئی اتنے میں اس نے کہا کہ ہماری خاصیت یہ ہے اے علامہ کہ ہم جب کسی کا نمک کھاتے ہیں تو ہم ان کا احسان رکھتے ہیں نمکدان کو نہیں توڑتے ہیں یہ فارسی میں ایک کہاوت ہے اگر کوئی نمک حرامی کرتا ہے 
तो कहते हैं कि नमक मिखुरी वह नमकदान मिशकनी यानी नमक भी खाते हो फिर उस बोतल को भी तोड़ते हो तो उसने कहा कि हमारी यह खासियत है यह शख्स कहता है अल्लाह मजलिसी से कि हम नमक खाते हैं लेकिन नमक भी चुकाते हैं हल जजाउल एहसान एहसान किसी का एहसान किसी का हाथ नहीं रखते हैं तो अल्लामा मजलिसी ने जवाब में फकत एक जुमला कहा बारहा में अर्ज करता हूं कि आलिम जब बामल होता है ना रोल मॉडल बनता है आलिम जब बामल होता है वो कुछ कहता है तो असर रखता है नहीं क्योंकि अल्लामा थे बामल थे उन्होंने फकत एक जुमला कहा और एक जुमला अल्लामा ने कहा उसमें असर था इफेक्ट था इंपैक्ट था उन्होंने कहा कि अच्छा तुम किसी का नमक जब खाते हो तो झुकाते हो रखते नहीं हो किसी का हाथ तो आज तक खुदा का नमक तूने कितना खाया तुमने खुदा का नमक कितना खाया आया खुदा की कितनी नाफरमानी करते हो कभी तुमने सोचा है तुमने कभी पौंडर किया है कि खुदा की कितनी नाफरमानी करते हो वहां से वो चला गया लेकिन अल्लामा के अल्फाज को बहुत असर कर गया उनके तहते दिल में दिल के अंदर बहुत असर कर गया चला तो गया रात के वक्त में आधी रात में अल्लामा मजलिसी जब नमाज शब के लिए खड़े हुए उस वक्त कोई दरवाजे को दक्कुल बाब करता है जब अल्लामा दरवाजे को खोलते हैं तो यही शख्स था रोता हुआ नजर आता है और कहता है कि मुझे माफ कीजिए मैंने गुस्ताखी की अल्लामा अब मैं तो लूतिया हूं लफंगा हूं अब मैं नमाज जमात में अव्वल वक्त में नमाज पढ़ूंगा आपके पीछे अब मैं अपने आप को चेंज करूंगा इंसान सोचे ये जिंदगी ये मौत जब होती है ना ये भी एक दर्श है बल्कि अहादीस में मिलता है कि मौत एक नहमत है मौत एक नहमत है और इसके पीछे भी एक फिलोसॉफी है लेकिन हमारा वक्त खत्म होने को आ रहा है इसके पीछे भी क्यों नहमत है इमाम सादिक फरमाते हैं कि मौत एक नहमत है अगर इंसान समझे ताकि हम हासिल कुछ दर्श हासिल करें और कितनी मौत हम देखते हैं है कि नहीं कितने किस्म की मौत देखते हैं है ना लेकिन असर पड़े एक दो दिन कब्रस्तान में जाते हैं फिर भूल जाते हैं है ना वो कब्र खुद देखते हैं हम है ना खाली कब्र जब देखते हैं तो डर सा लगता है वो फकत थोड़ी देर के लिए दोबारा हम भूल जाते हैं कितने मौत हम देखते हैं मखसूस माँ का जब इंतकाल हो जाए तो बहुत सख्त है हाँ मैं पहले भी अर्ज कर चुका हूं अगर आपको याद हो जुमेरात की मजालिसों में जब माँ का इंतकाल होता है ना तो बच्चों के लिए बहुत सख्त है मैंने खुद देखा है कुछ बच्चों ने घर को बदल दिया कुछ बच्चों ने शहर को छोड़ दिया क्यों क्योंकि अब दिल नहीं करता है माँ चली गई माँ बहुत बड़ी नेमत है मूसा से भी कहा गया कि मूसा रो रोने का हक है क्योंकि तुम्हारी माँ चली गई ए मूसा वो रात के वक्त में जब उठ उठ के दुआ करती थी अब वो मां न रही अब क्यों बलाएं आती थी आप पर लेकिन फिर बलाएं दूर तल जाती थी उस मां के लिए उस मां की दुआ के लिए अब ध्यान संभल संभल के चलना मूसा अब वो दुआ नहीं रही मां की मां बड़ी नेमत है इंसान कद्र करे अपनी मां का वाकई बहुत बड़ी चीज है मां मोहतरम सामीन दिल चाहता है कि उस मां को याद करो जिन्होंने छोटे छोटे बच्चे को छोड़ा और हमेशा के लिए नींद हमेशा की नींद के लिए हमेशा के लिए जब बच्चे को छोड़ दिया तो बच्चे कितने रंजीदा हुए बच्चे कितने गमगीन हुए हाँ ज्यादा रो कि यहाँ तक अमीरुल मोमिनीन ने कहा कि मैं जैनब को नहीं बुलाऊंगा मदद के लिए जैनब जहरा को मैं घुसल दूंगा असमा बिन तमेश ने पानी लाई मौला के लिए मौला कायनात ये रहा पानी आप घुसल देना चाहते हैं जहरा को लेकिन असमा कहती है कि मैंने सोचा शायद मौलाए कायनात जैनब को बुलाएंगे ए जैनब आओ मदद के लिए आओ मां को घुसल देता हूं लेकिन मौला ने जैनब को नहीं पुकारा न कुलसूम को पुकारा मौला ने तनहा घुसल दिया जहरा को इल्लत क्या है जब मौला से पूछा गया मौलाए कायनात ने फरमाया 
मैं नहीं चाहता हूँ जैनब माँ का उस जख्म को देखे फातिमा की पसलियां टूट गई भला बेटी कैसे माँ के जख्म को देखेगी हा मैं कहूंगा मौला जैनब कैसे देख पाएगी जैनब तो बेटी है आप खुद न देख पाए सलमान अल फारसी कहते हैं कि मौला कायनात ने जब जैनब को घुस जब जहरा को घुसल दे दिया मौला कायनात बाहर आए अपने सर को दीवार से टकराने लगे सलमान ने मौला से पूछा क्यों दीवार को टकराते हैं क्यों सर को अपने सर को दीवार से टकराते हैं इतने बहादुर अली और अली रो रहे हैं मौला कायनात ने कहा ये सलमान जो मंजर मैंने देखा वो मंजर बहुत दर्दनाक मंजर था वो दाग अली हमेशा के लिए ले जाएगा अपनी कब्र तक ये दाग अली ले जाएगा फातिमा को घुसल देते देते मैंने देखा फे फातिमा की तीन पसलियां टूट गई लेकिन फातिमा ने मुझ तक शिकायत भी नहीं की फा इतनी साबिरा थी बिनते रसूल इतनी शाकिरा थी बिनते रसूल मुझ तक शिकायत भी नहीं की हाजादारो लो फातिमा का जनाजा तैयार हुआ मौला ने कफन पहनाया जब सहने खाना में फातिमा का जनाजा लाया गया एक मरतबा मौला कायनात ने बच्चों को बुलाया हसन आओ मां को खुदाफिजी करो आखिरी रुखसत हो लो जैनब आओ आखिरी रुखसत हो लो कुलसूम आओ आखिरी रुखसत हो लो जब हुसैन की बारी आई जब हुसैन को बुलाया गया आप जानते हैं ना जब छोटा बच्चा होता है घर में उनको बहुत लाद से पाला जाता है जहरा ने हुसैन को बहुत लाद से पाला हुसैन ने कहा मैं नहीं आऊंगा हत्ता माँ मुझे खुद बुलाए एक मरतबा बंदे कफन टूट गए जहरा के दो हाथ बाहर आए जहरा के लाशे से आवाज आई आजा मेरे बच्चे आजा आजा मेरी गोद में आजा जिब्राइल अमीन नाजिल हुए अली को अली से कहा गया हुसैन को और जहरा से जुदा करो खुदा को ये गवार आ गई है हाजादा रो जहरा जहरा बहुत परेशान थे हुसैन के लिए वसीयतों में भी जहरा की वसीयतों में से एक वसीयत ये थी या अली मेरे हुसैन की आदत है रात के वक्त में उठ उठ के पानी मांग रहे हैं मैं जानती हूँ कि आप बाप है बाप का दिल है लेकिन जब हुसैन उठे तो उनको पानी दे दीजिएगा जहरा की वसीयतों में से एक वसीयत ये भी थी कि मेरी कब्र में आएगा आइएगा और कुलान की तिलावत कीजिएगा जन्नतुल बकी में जहरा की कब्र के पास जब जहरा को सुपुर्द खाक कर लिया मोल कायनात बैठे हुए थे कुरान की तलावत करते थे एक मरतबा जहरा की कब्र कांपने लगी लरजने लगी मोल कायनात ने जहरा से सवाल किया ए बिन तो रसूल क्या हुआ जहरा की कब्र से आ आवाज आई अली आप यहाँ पे हो कुरान की तिलावत करते हैं वहां पे हुसैन उठ गए हैं पानी मांग रहे हैं पानी दीजियो मेरे हुसैन को मैं कहूंगा जहरा तो कतलगाह में भी पहुंच गई आशूर की शब में भी रोने की आवाज आती थी अपने बालों से कतलगाह में झाड़ू देती थी और कहती थी वाह हुसैन वाह मुसीबत अला लानत अलकौमिन वसयालमीन वलमो अयमन कलबियन कलिमून इन्ना लाही व इन्ना इले राजून रिजम बे कवाही व तस्लीम अमर मोमिन रिक्वेस्टेड टू रिसाइड सूर फातहा फोमर हुमा नरगिस बाई अल राखिया अल्फातहा